Hey, it's Joe Glides Beometer, and I was going through some old videos, and I found this one of Hellbent and Maestrieth. And Hellbent was asking about using objects, and then we started touching on classes at the end of this. Uh, it's actually a part of like a four-hour series. This, this is just the, the beginning parts, and then we got a little sidetracked on learning studio, so I've, I've cut that from it. Uh, but this video was just going to kind of end. Um, if you guys are still interested, let me know, and I'll, I'll go through the, the rest of the videos and piece them together. Uh, it, there's some good learnings in here. If you're new to using objects and classes, make sure it's just showing how you can uh, use them and some of the best practices. So hope you enjoy it. Cheers. You can share. Why don't you share your your the thing you were just talking about that you <clears throat> wanting okay. to be able to do? Okay, I have I have absolutely no experience with with objects at all. I first started programming with C, all you know console applications, and let me uh, share a screen. Okay, so let me close that. So I have a couple of uh, programs. Where, so, so like I said, I, ha I have absolutely no experience with objects, and every time I try to pick it up, it's it jumps in waist deep, whereas I want to just go tiptoe in, and then once I get my feet wet a little bit, then I'll start picking it up a at a rapid pace, right? So I have a script here, and what I want to do is I want to find out if I can actually do this kind of stuff with objects. So what I have is, I don't know if you can, can you see my screen all right? Yeah. Chad? Okay. Yeah. So what I have here is, this This is just a, a mini program where it's going to shoot this missile and track and lock onto this target here mm -hmm. and then hit it. Right? So I'm going to start moving this around. Right? And it tracks it. But here I'm using... Tons and tons of conditionals. Okay. Right? So what I want to know is if I can do this with objects simpler, if I can track, keep track of where an, uh, an object is, uh, all the stats about it, and where the other things are in relationship to it. Hmm. I, I mean, Chad, don't you do something similar with, uh, with Studio, with your all the different, I, I forget what they're called, but the boxes, basically, the edit fields, and you're moving them around, and you know. Uh, that's a little bit different. Okay. It's using XML. All that's through XML, actually. Uh, See, the thing is, I can, I, can do the, I can do the logic. I can type in the logic, but it seems like there's got to be an easier way of doing it, and... My assumption would be that in, if I put the parameters into an object, like where it currently is, how much health an object has, uh, everything like that, and have it keep track of that on its own without me having to type out all this logic for it. Um, hmm. See, my only thing is once you've got it in the object, you still have to do some kind of logic on it to say, Okay, well, you know, an object is only going to hold information. That's all its purpose is. So you're still going to have to do the logic. Okay, okay, then, okay, then for, forget about, okay, forget about the object part. But if I go into another programming language, like let's say C Sharp or something like that, they, they do that kind of thing automatically. Like they can just in... In 10 lines of code, they can accomplish what I accomplish in 500 lines of code. Okay. Uh, do you have an example of these 10 lines of code that I can see? No, I, I don't have an example of it because I don't do C Sharp. Right. But from, what, from all the times that I've looked it up, it's, it's always they'll have a, <clears throat> a function that's constantly, I don't know, it gets, I guess it's getting checked all the time or... Well, wouldn't the the general like let's say line two forty seven there right wherever you're doing the the math I mean to me that seems like you could put that into a function and have one thing that is you know one spot where you do the calculations and yet you you reuse that for a lot of different reasons you know what I mean mm -hmm. I mean that would to me because I think you're doing them all individually 
right? No, this this is uh, I have other ones here. This these are how it determines. Uh, okay, so these ones here determine how how fast the missile is going to move on a specific axis. Because depending on if the x-axis, if the distance between the object is greater on the y-axis or the x-axis, it'll compensate by moving faster right. on the one that's further away. So that way I end up getting a, so if I look here, see how it goes? It goes mm -hmm. kind of in a straight line, right? Whereas if I look at this side where I did the math wrong, if I look at this side where I did the math wrong, it sort of goes up to the top and then goes across. Uh-huh. Right. Whereas this side here, it'll actually go on and uh, because I did the math right on it, it'll actually sort of go almost in a straight line to it. Because if you look, I can see the speed, the X speed and the Y speed changes depending on the distance. Right. But like I said, I, I, I just want us to try to see if objects could actually do this because that's the main thing that I want to get into objects for is because I believe that it could help me keep track of the stats of things. Yeah, it like I've seen every example that I've seen for it. it says you put the color of a ball into it, you put the size of the ball into it. Well, why am I doing that then? Um. I'm just trying to think of a way that I, that objects can be useful for this sort of thing. Um, okay, can maybe maybe just give me an example of uh, do an example of something that you think is the is a is a very good example of how to use an object. I like like something. It can be something super quick, super quick that goes through all the stages of how to create the object and then how to actually use it. Okay. So here, I'll stop the chair. Excuse me. Chad, um, I was, I was sort of walking him through the stuff you helped me with a couple weeks ago with, you remember when I asked you if you could help me build that GUI and it was going to have a bunch of different types of elements, but I didn't care about how it really looked. Yeah. And um, so I don't know if that's a good example that you want to, because I was like, you. Well, I'm going to start you, basically like he asked me to, and then if okay. he wants me to expand, I'll. Fair enough. That's a good point. Yeah, that is a little complicated. Well, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Before you jump into that, I, I let me let me see here. Okay. Yeah. Let me screen share for a quick second, because he was he was showing me. All right. Can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. It's buffering. There we go. Okay. Okay. So he was showing me how you created it. It was him that created the object for you for the GUI. Yeah. Okay. So the closest thing that I've ever done is something like this, where I I build my GUI all within 50 lines of code, and this is a GUI with multiple different controls on multiple different tabs. In total, it ended up with a. Uh, it takes a little while to run because it's got so many controls. But here, it's uh, 20, 2,715 controls, Jesus. right, all with 50 lines of code. And if I, I've set it up so that way I can actually show that it's fully functional. If I type in here, it should pop up a tooltip. And if I go to the last tab and press this button here, it should fill everything. Right, so it's a fully functional, it's got all the variables loaded, I can do different things with it, all with just 50 lines of code. And I could have made this a million controls with the, the same amount of code pretty much. Right. Okay, okay, let me uh, I'm just curious as to, oh darn. Oh, sorry, did, oh, you, want to see... did you want me to share that again? Well, no, it's all right. Um, you're making an individual control for each of those items, but yes. they, the position and size gets reused and yes. the control but, itself. But I can, see, I did this because I did this as a tutorial. 
Right. Right. So I have to keep the tutorial short so I can't. So I would if I did add more controls and if I did change the positions of some of them, I would have to do more logic inside of it when it's building it. Uh -huh. but the concept is still the same. Whereas before, if I did it another way, I would have to go into each of those controls and type out its variables. Sure, sure. I'm just, I get stuck on a scenario because my brain is like, okay, well, if it's all just edits, texts, uh, check boxes and whatnot, make one screen worth of them and then build objects to hold the information depending on which tab you're on, but and also that would be you know a lot faster as far as loading goes but uh you know if can you flush out an example that you're talking about john uh yeah i could look to oh i can share my screen all right let's see uh wait for it There's... like i had done i had done that as a two-part tutorial the first one i had gone into talking about using pseudo arrays within the gui and then that one i just wanted to like do an example where it's you know thousands of controls with very little uh code oh whoops i didn't want to do that well as uh, oh Let's see. OBJ Hope you got some time. Sometimes my typing gets a little slow. Okay, um, to your ex or to your example, what I mean, if everything stayed the same, just pages changed, mm -hmm. like the data of those pages changed. Okay, let's see. Uh, how would I do this? Okay, so. I'm just going to do it with straight edit controls. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Just trying to think of how this could easily be done. So let's go loop. Let's go a four by four grid. Loop four by four. Matter. Yeah, mine was mine was uh, just I had to do an extra loop just because it jumped through uh, tabs as well. Right, right, right. Mine, mine was mine was a fifteen, then four, and then twenty. Right. Well, give me. Let me just think about this for just a second. So let's also let's give it four pages here. Uh, we add button X plus M. Uh, so let's you see how when he's typing, how it's showing him where he is in the control and the 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 method call or whatever it is. Man call, yeah. It, um, that is one of the things I love about Studio is it keeps telling you where you oh, okay, are. Okay, I see. I see what you're talking yeah. about. Even if you built the function yourself, right? It shows you where you are, what parameter you're typing on it. It's awesome. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, let's just go ahead and do that. Okay, so there's our four pages. Now, escape, accept, return. Okay, so let's go ahead and say, all right, we're looping four by four. So, let's see. The, so, we add edit with the uh, V, let's see here, index, so we come up here, the X, zero, so, index plus plus, we got the V index, okay. So, let's go ahead and also, Put that well, we'll just to put that there. And let's go ahead and why am I double tapping stuff was wrong with me? Sorry. I get a little nervous when I'm kinda on the spot here. Alright. So Yeah, I don't I don't usually do coding uh, uh in real life either. I, I have videos. If I don't like the take, I just re record. Right. <clears throat> 
Okay, so there's your one, two, three, four, five. What did I get? Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Da, 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 da. Uh, no, I guess no, I'm not unfamiliar with the X plus M. What is that one? Uh, just margin. Okay. Uh, all right. So. So wouldn't it just be? Isn't it just XM? No, XM would make it. Uh, XM would make it all. Oops, like that. Oh, okay. I know what. You, okay, I know what you. It's so yes, yes, yes. So if your margin's ten, X plus M would be ten. Add ten to it. Yes. Okay, I got you. I got you. Okay, so now we got to give these all G labels. Uh, G. Um, call it type. Why not? G type. So now we come down here. Type. Turn. Ah, you are in. There we go. All right. With your with your escape with your escape, you don't actually need that return there. No, I know. It's habit. I I, I, t I used to have that same habit. I I've I've done that for since I began having the exit app and a return right after it. Yeah, uh, there are some instances where it actually is necessary. Believe it or not. Um, when you have uh, multiple instances and you're telling it to like reload, sometimes it can cause undesirable effects. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, we control. Mm -hmm. So now it should say one, two, three, four, and so on. So we got to figure out, actually, I should just make this on tabs rather than, because that's probably what you're doing anyway with the top control. Yeah, yeah I used a tab control. Go ahead, tab. What was the, the line 21? I don't understand. Just a tool tip. A good control. Oh, you have a, okay, thank you. Yeah, I've got my libraries. Nice. Uh, okay, so GUI to add tab, let's go G, change tab, comma, let's just say tab, and then we'll copy that, oops, and then we'll, yeah, let's just do it this way, okay, so, oops. Uh, oh, yeah, no. Nothing to it so far. Okay, so we got to change that to buttons. Uh, and then change the height to, was about 32? Something like that, about 30. Yeah, 28. 28. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay. So we've got tab, and now we are going to GUI tab, uh, let's see, I forget how to. So you just use the number of its position or its name. Well, I just want it to actually be off the tabs. Oh, okay. Um, it's just tab, then. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there just tab. Okay, now, when we change the tabs or we type information, we're going to want, uh, oops, GUI control get, yeah, tab, tab, uh, no value, sys, tab, control, three, two, one, and we'll just use active because I'm not going to be bothered with that. So now I can do that and say, hello, tab one, one, tab two, one. Now we've got two, one. So now we're at tab two, text eight. So it keeps track of like an XY coordinate using the tabs as the X and the, the number of the edit as the Y. So that being said, what I would do 
is come in here and create an object. So um, information, well, let's just call it info, colon equals. That creates the object. Now you come in here and you say, well, I don't even need this really. This is technically not necessary. Well, no, I do need it. I, I apologize. Okay. So first what we're going to do is we're going to build uh, info square bracket. We want the tab. We want to tell it, okay, this is information for this tab, a GUI control, colon equals, and we get GUI, oops, submit, no hide. And then we do percent a GUI control percent. Okay, so what that should do is store what you typed into the control on the tab. So hopefully we can get this right. So let's go A, B, and info for C, D, and B. Uh, list equals tab. A, and then uh, info colon, I guess I could do if D, there we go, info D, okay, so tooltip list, so hopefully, oh, I forgot to clear it, <laughs> oh. list, is a GUI popping up? Oh, yeah, you know what? I apologize. You share studio. Yeah, my bad. Uh, share. How do I? Oh, there's the best. Oh, ah, I'm an idiot. Okay. All right. Hopefully now you can see it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So info tab one testing another. Oh, let's put some enters on the end of this. There we go. So tab one, box one is testing. So I guess I should put this. Uh, um, edit. C. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So tab one's uh, testing. So tab one, edit one is testing. Let's go over here to here. Testing again. So tab one, edit eight is testing as well, but it's got different information. So let's go to tab three. And I know it doesn't change because I haven't set it up yet. But now let's go to tab one. Oops. Tool tips get in the way. Hey, I did it right. Okay. So let's come. Oh, well, okay. So on tab three, edit eight is www. So you see that it's keeping track of mm -hmm. all of the information and where it was put. Now, let's go ahead and, oops, well, let's not get rid of that. So on change tab, what we need to do is uh, for a, b, in info, square bracket, tab. And that's going to get the information so what we need to do is loop, uh, how many boxes do we have? Four. No, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So we've got 20 boxes. So loop 20, um, or we can, C-O-N-T-R-O, we control, subcommand, nothing, uh, a index, and then that's it clears out all of those then we come in here and it says okay for avian info so we control t r there we go we control a index b so hopefully so four and then we click here oh no we got B. Why do we? Ah, we have B's because B. <laughs> okay. Testing. One, two, three. Or two, three, four. 
I have no idea what I'm doing half the time. So <coughs> now here. So now when I click tab one, of course we're gonna get friggin' tooltips, but you've got testing one, two, three. This should clear it out. If you go to here, which it does, okay. We can get rid of the tooltips. Alright. So now we have testing one, two, three. Three. We'll go to tab three and put in info here. When we click back on tab one. You've got your testing one, two, three. Info here. All of these are blank. All of those are blank. That was what was running through my mind as you were showing me what you had. And we're using multiple of the same instances of, you know, edit controls and check boxes and all that other stuff. So this is how I would have done that. But, um, and then obviously you could add complexity to it. But if there's, each page has different, a different set of um, controls, then you couldn't do this. Mm -hmm. But this is what was going through my mind as I was like, oh, well, you could just, if it's all the same stuff, you could set it up in a way that you don't have to um, have several tabs of several controls, but in order to have it so that you can have, you know, different setups on each tab, then. Do, do me a favor, do me a favor, uh, close your uh, box, the, the G GUI, and uh, give me full screen. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this, and I'll, I'll look can... over it later. I'll just paste it. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. He, he's got a built-in thing that pumps it out to, uh, like, a paste bin type thing, and then he'll just give you the link. Okay. Uh, you can put it in our chat on the Zoom. I don't know how to do that. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Okay. There you go. That's the script. Okay, okay. there we go. Um, how do now, how do I get this? Let me see. All right. Yeah, I, I'm going to have a look at that later on when I can dissect it. Did, was there anything in particular that, that, you know, you wanted to follow up with a question on right now? That Yeah, by all means, if you've got questions, go for it. Ask. Um, one second. Let me let me see how to exit out of this screen. Um, right now I'm stuck in full screen. I don't know how to get out. Uh, escape or? Escape, okay. All right, there we go. <clears throat> this is my first time using Zoom. So, it's uh, there should be a little thing at the top that you can also um, bring down, and I, I, there's a more, and I think exit full screens in there or something like that. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> okay, I got it saved on my screen now. Okay. So, so yeah, I'll, I'll dissect that that later. Um. But did you see, I'm just curious, like on, on rows 28 where he starts um, iterating over the info object and then how he leveraged the, the you know, you first, well, Chad, correct me if I'm wrong here, but the B there is, is that the different tabs? Is that what it is? And then you. Well, A is, um, A, B is going to be tab and then the GUI control. Oh, thank you. But okay. the GUI control is another object so right. basically this object looks like this it's going to be info dot i have joe i have you on my screen oh D look for a different window ryan it gets confusing but i think you should still be able to see his screen view options um uh, no typically there's just like a third there's three windows okay i see participants three Share screen. I don't really know where to look here. Can, let me uh, let me do a new share here. See if that. Yeah, I, I'm I'm looking at a click on click event. Is that yours, Chad? On click event? No, that's not me. Okay, it says that I'm looking at your screen. Right, okay, I'm maybe I'll just looking... share and then restart. Yeah. Yeah, that that wiped mine, so I'm I bet it'll pop back up here in a second. Yeah, it's going. 
Okay, now now I, now I can see. I had to, it, maybe it was your screen, but you had another uh, screen open. No, this was the only thing I had. Okay, open. okay, <laughs> okay. So the way that this, the way that I set up this um, object is basically like this, and then at the end of it is uh, info dot tab dot control. Uh, dot well and then colon equals the data that's in it so at the top on line three I create the wrapper basically or the the object and then down on 32 is where I start stuffing in information into it um, so normally what you can do is like say info dot um, two that creates, um, uh, uh, okay, let's just do this. Now let's just exit it. Okay, so info colon equals square brackets. Info dot two colon equals, hello. So what that does is info dot, oops, info dot two, it'll say hello. So you can create objects and if you want to create other um, items within that object, it's pretty simple this way. You just tell it info dot two or info dot four or info dot hello or whatever you want. That's how you can add objects or add um, key value pairs to an, ob to an object, an existing object. But say you want to create an object inside of an object, then you can go like this and say two comma one is hello, so two dot one will still say hello. Then info two comma four only equals there. So info uh, dot two dot four so you've got hello and there both within the same object under the key under the sub object two the key of one is hello the key of four is there so using the square brackets you can do that there's also another way that you could do this which would be uh, let's just go ahead and say uh, info dot two colon equals a new object then info dot two dot one colon equals hello and then we'll just change this to four and there so now you get the same result but you have to build it in steps like this whereas if you use the square brackets you can build it as far as you want as long as you separate it by, by commas. But that's pretty much in a nutshell what hey, objects are for. Chad, can you can you throw up your debugger and then show how you can see inside? Because that, it's awesome functionality. Um, uh, you know what, I don't think that's gonna work. Uh, let's see. Uh, Okay, so message box testing. We'll throw a breakpoint in here. Oh, that's not a breakpoint. That's a. <laughs> I don't use this often, so. Okay. So let's debug, run. And so we've got global info to, and then. Awesome. Yeah. So you that can, for me helps me visualize that you know. right so you can see that info is the main object mm -hmm. you've got a sub object of two here which I created and then under that one hello so it's info dot two dot one hello info dot two dot four there info dot two dot four is there so to my knowledge that's 
the best way to use objects for storing um, multiple tiered data and uh, you know just like you can um, make it so that uh, it organizes and stores data a little bit better and easier to re, uh, recall the data as well. Well, uh, that's what I was going to say was that's the other thing is you could access, you could figure out the location of where hello is, right? You, uh, could, you could not pop. Um, well, I'll, okay, but then you can still, you can do the pop type thing, right, of dropping the last. Um, well, pop will kill it. I mean, pop will get right. rid of it. Yeah, I'm just saying depending on what you're working with, right? It, right. It, yeah, um, it all depends on uh, you know, your application and what you're trying yeah. to do. Like, um, <clears throat> pardon me, um, a lot of times I will do something that will put a lot of data out. Like I've got an IRC chat program that I use, and sometimes you'll get a flood of information in, and you want to uh, process it, but you don't want to interrupt the, um, uh, the receiving of the data so you can just store all of the returned information into a big list and then go through it in a timer so that the data doesn't get out of order. And it, you can just keep pushing information into it like, uh, okay, let's go ahead and let's do an example here. Uh, okay. Yeah, um, before we switch off the other thing, I'm just curious on your, the example that you kind of mimicked what had done right uh -huh. um if you had scaled it to the the number of controls that he had do you think it would be faster in this approach as long as the controls stay the same on each page then absolutely uh -huh. but i mean you would still have to on when you switch the tabs you would have to update colors and change everything See, else. that's the thing the way the way that i had written it was that um, I did multiple things in it that changed, like, for example, uh, every time it would add a new control, it would change the color of the controls, mm -hmm. which, I mean, in that example, I used I used it just so that way it changed the color. But instead of it changing the color of that control, what it could have done is uh, said, I'm going to grab an X value and place a different type of control there. Also, when I created the... I created a sublogic for the checkboxes that was outside of the loop that built the edit boxes, so that if a specific value was if a if a value was true, then it would do add in those controls, and I could fine tune the logic so that way if I needed to change the spacing. So for example, I could have an I could set up an array that held the values of the positions of all the different types of controls. And then as values became true or false, it could switch between them mm -hmm. and jump back and forth. You could do that. But the thing is with a, with an object, it's not actually watching anything. It's just storing information. So you mm -hmm. would still have to uh, build See, a when you do When you do this info, this uh, info.2.1, this reminds me of a just a multi-dimensional array. Yeah, it is basically um it's the the only thing i mean <clears throat> with a multi-dimensional array that's all well and good unless you want to actually call the dimensions a word then it has to be an object which is different so if say you wanted this to be um help rather than two mm -hmm. you can't do that in an array it has to be an object it's the same basic idea it's just you can use words instead of uh your example on six and seven you can pump words in that as well it works the same way yeah 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 okay you just have, you just have to use quotes see because my my background uh -huh. is in c uh -huh. And like when I look at this, I see sometimes I see multi-dimensional array or I see a structure, mm -hmm. right? But these are these are things that that I know is something else. Like we didn't, I they don't call them objects there. So I've I always have this that an object is something completely different. It's pretty much just an associative array. It there's I mean a, a you know array is, you know, um, array.1, array.2, array.3. 
you pop something out of the array, so you delete array dot two, it reshifts everything to be you know one two three, mm -hmm. so on and so forth, and it keeps track of the um, the indexes, which is great if that's what you need, but if you want something to be a little more you know human readable and store data in something that you could easily go back and say, okay, I know info.help has a lot of the information that I need. So you store it in there. And then when you come back to it and say, you want to iterate over it, you can, so info.help. So message box AB, you know that one is hello, four is there, but Say you want to have more things, so uh, info, square brackets, there, uh, two, colon equals. So. so now you know that you're just going to get hello and there if you're going through that, but if you want to do info dot there, M A B, so one, four, and then two is sub. So it's basically just like, okay, this is the information I want to keep here. A big example of this is um, like I have, when I create anything large, I do global V colon equals square bracket. And then I never reuse the object V anywhere else to for creation. So then when it comes in and it's like, okay, say I'm in a function and it's not a global function, it's going to be a local function. You're obviously familiar or hopefully familiar with functions. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So function. So let's say um, I want to set V dot um, my variable to four. So then I say function and that so now when i come in here and say v dot my var it's going to say four so all of my global variables or variables i think i'm going to use in another function i just put it in a v dot so that it it trans you know uh, super global the the super global <laughs> object v will be everywhere right mm -hmm. So See, you don't have to, if, yeah. If I, if I can share my screen, if I can share my screen for a second. Sure. Um, That's interesting, though, Chad. I never thought of that. Oh, yeah, I do that constantly. Almost every one of my scripts that I write, studio included, is okay. it just works that way. <clears throat> so what I see there is largely, how do I move this bar here without okay. clicking on something? Do you know how I can move this? Can you see this? Or no. no? Okay. okay. Um, there's. I think there's like a red or a green spot. You there's can't the, move it. The green. Okay. Yes. 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 I see it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So this is what I would do for when I was doing C. Yeah. Basically, it's the same thing. Okay. Okay. So I I I had the I tied the two together a long time ago, but. I mean, I never hear them as the same. Like it's it's an object. This is a structure, not an object. It's a it's a structure. Right, but you can call to it like sales dot company dot whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same, same, same. Let me same. see if I can see. Um, here. Data dot price dash data dot cost. Right. Obviously, the syntax is going to be different because this is a different language. But sure, sure. Well, let me see. I haven't looked at this in like five years. So. Where is the data structure instantiated? 
I don't know. I don't remember where. So this is where I have it. I've created my structure, but I can't remember where I've used it. Let me see here. Here, I actually know what I can for the keyword. Yeah, I can see listings. Uh, listings is a function, so I can find where listings is. Let me just collapse that. Okay, here, listings will have it. But it's it's in it's here. Here it is. This is where I print it out. Okay. Uh, so it's it's data. Data is the structure. Uh huh. And then model is the element in it. Uh huh. Ooh, oh. I'll do that. <laughs> um, data color, data cost. Yes, yeah, the same. I've, I've done. I've done not in this program, but one of my later programs, like this one right here. This is from another program. Mm hmm. And I can I know that I had much larger like it would have, I guess, uh, <clears throat> components inside of it. So it would be data dot model dot something else dot something else, and then the the position within that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty much identical to that. The only thing is, um, like using I don't know if you use DLL calls at all. No, no. Okay. Well, when you do a DLO call, you um, basically have structures you have to build that mimic the structures in C, but you can't do it this way, unfortunately, using uh, objects because the, uh, the bit width and everything else is way out of whack. So you have to actually create uh, memory addresses and put uh, data into it. So, but yeah, it's almost identical to what you're doing there as far as, you know, data storage and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, with auto hotkey, you can do it on the fly. Uh, it's to me, it's a lot easier than. Oh, know. oh yeah. I was just, I was talking to Joe earlier about oh. like, if I had, if I had made this colored, it would take hundreds of lines of code. Mm -hmm. I'll be back in a couple seconds. Okay. So. But yeah, I, I'm sure you know exactly what an object is now, and yeah, you know, just building and implementing it and using it is something altogether different. But you at least know the basics of what an object is. Okay, here here's some of the structures that I have. Right. So, so I, I'd have multiple structures. This would be fleets dot fleet location, mm -hmm. and the y axis of its location. Right. Okay, so as long as long as I can tie those two together, it's it gives me a, at least a starting point to actually start investigating it now, uh -huh. because I can put apples and apples. Sure. I was thinking, um, if you want to see a couple examples of stuff that that he's done for me, um, I was thinking, Chad, the. Uh, the Outlook address book builder thing we made. Yeah, I'll stop, sure. Yeah, let me see if I can pop that open real quick. Let me share my desktop. Um, close it. And let's see if that would be. Because um, that one was pretty amazing because it, it the number of uh, GUI checkboxes and everything, right, that you were grabbing was, was incredible. Yeah. So, yes. Look, if you can find that, great. Um, it might take you a minute. Hopefully, it'll take you two minutes to find that because I need a cigarette. <laughs> yeah. When I when I con I tend to concentrate on things, it uh eats through my nicotine. Uh, go go ahead. I, I found it, but go ahead if you wanna. I hear a door. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. That's all right. I had to use the restroom anyway. All right. 
He's doing a refresh on his emails. Okay. Yeah, objects have been a pain for me to get into because every time I try to look it up, it'll either be some nonsense that doesn't really exp go into it the way that I need it to, uh -huh. or other times it'll be like you're neck deep right in it and it's difficult to weed through what is the important parts rather than what is the other stuff that it's doing. Yeah, in a nutshell, it's just basically a wrapper structure that you can associate keys and values with it's not I mean there's no there's no real uh, mysticism to it it's just basically storing storing data or you can also store objects or like com objects or stuff like that within them as well but um, you, you just associate one with the other you got a lot of email there brother yeah, interesting. We must have put some sort of a cap on the the out of because it it just iterated over that. <clears throat> yeah, well, it did uh, ten thousand before. Oh, did it already? Wow. Yeah, there was a ten thousand in another one. <laughs> I don't know what you were going to uh, explain as far as... Uh, I just wanted to demonstrate, because this to me was an awesome one of the dynamically getting all the, you know, folders um, and, and the whole updating of, we you know, click and unclick and the parent structure and how you built that. Uh -huh. I know you're using XML for it, but it, it's, it's, it's more of an example to me of the combination of using objects with your XML class that, that is so powerful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, XML is ridiculous. Oh, now we're down to. Oh, I see. Okay, so each maybe it's iterating over each inbox. Yeah, that's what it's doing. It's folder overall parent folder. Yeah. Jesus. Well, you got a lot of those checked, so each one. I, I hit select all. Yeah. I figure what the hell. Yeah. Um, but um. Yeah, is it, I wish people would explain objects when they explain them in the simplest form. Yeah. Because there's really nothing to an object that is difficult. Yeah, I, I think it gets back to it's it's the application of it, right? Right. That, that um, in, and often the demos you see are incredibly complex, you know, or they're so simplistic we were we were talking about earlier we we've seen two video youtube videos explaining objects but they're so simplistic they're like it's a you know it will put an apple and here it'll be a color and you're like okay that's that's not really explaining it very well well that honestly pretty much explains it exactly i mean it, it's up to the user to yeah to I, figure but, out what they want to do with it so you're right um what they don't do that, is explain that, okay, that, that, that brought me to that. Sorry, that brought me to the whole thing where okay, so they're talking about an apple or a ball, and they put it in. It's got a width, it's got a height, it's got a weight. Well, that's where I got the assumption that objects will be able to do the tracking of my uh, missile and my my character moving around. Mm, all it's doing is storing, brother. Well, and, and the other thing I will say this, I've done it enough that, to see the speed difference is amazing when you're using objects for, for, you know, pulling it out and putting it in stuff compared to using variables. Um, Actually, a class might be what you're looking for. Yes, often class, when I see object, uh, I mean, uh, C sharp and stuff like that, they're doing class and all this other stuff that I've never gotten into. Right. Uh, let me do a little mock up here. Uh, so, real quick, while I have this open, this this GUI that we're seeing mm -hmm. when we first open it, it looks at all of my in out. I don't know if you use Outlook, but um, I have a lot of different inbox, you know, different um folders, PST files, right, and then inboxes within them. But the way he structured it, right, I can I can click at the higher level, right, and it'll get everything beneath it. That's interesting. That I don't up. think I went down to subs within subs. Oh, okay. So it's just the top one. Oh, that's right. And then we just can deselect some. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, but it was it was pretty awesome in how it 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 dynamically will update, right, and pull them and build the the GUI like you know. And, and these are the counts of how many emails are in each of these folders. And then it iterates over them, gets the email addresses and and uh, other information about them, and then I can export it to Excel. But uh, that that was one I thought was pretty awesome. The other one, let me just because I have it open. <clears throat> there's an API um, called Clearbit that that he had helped me build a bunch of stuff for, and so I can search for for people. It's just brought back. These are people that work at this at at with the extension ti.com, but I could you know make it more. Let's put in where their name has to have Joe. <laughs> so there's only one that's an information technology. Let me. I'm curious if I'm still on this. No, huh? Good. They've updated the records. Um, but it this is there's multiple tabs on. Uh, actually, this this something happened to this thing. There we go. Hmm. This this tells us how many. Oh, that was another thing you did with the that uh, XML class was had it where I could add. Add things, right? Uh -huh. I forget where shoe is that. Oh, that's what it was. I'm I'm updating and those get saved in my default behavior, right? But I um, mean, this is where I can go and check what actually gets displayed. This is the data that's been returned from the API calls. Um, but each of these tabs are different, different things that uh. Are, are different GUIs that are doing different API calls and returning different data. Is this one still? How does this fucking work? Yeah, so so this just used their API to pull back the icon, um, if there is one, and then uh, the companies, their domains. Anyway, it was another example of one he helped me with. Oh, fun. Um. All right. What um, were you going to share? Something that you said. Yeah, he was going to share something about classes. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, key value. I'm just typing this up here real quick. I guess I could share my screen while I'm doing it. Listen to me mumble and have no context. I guess. <laughs> okay. So basic object, basic, 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 plain. Okay, so you, or pardon me, uh, classes in at least in auto hockey are kind of like deep objects. They're like smart objects. You can uh, create what are called methods inside of the objects. I don't know if you've heard the term methods or not. I've heard it, but because my found, like I said, my foundation is in C, and most of this stuff you just don't do it. At least one the, to the level that I got to, right? You don't deal with this stuff. Okay, so um, basically, to create a class, you just call it, say class and then the name of the class. Don't ever use the name of the class again anywhere else, and it is super global. So even in a function, if you use, if I were to say um, function, I get rid of that, test colon equals uh, something, that kills this class. Hmm. So just bear that in mind with classes. Okay, they, okay. okay. They are what's called a super global. <clears throat> um, are you familiar with variable, na uh, variable spaces? Scope? Scope, yes, sorry. Yes, sorry. yes. Yeah, okay. um, one of the things that, like, <clears throat> because in um, in C, everything that you do is within a function, mm -hmm. right? And it, it, it's very clear right away that everything is in a function. So you start, the main program is in the main function, mm -hmm. right? So, right? So we don't really have to deal with, it, it's global or local. Right. Right, because it's either seen by all the functions or it's not seen by all the functions. Right. Yeah. Um, with uh, Auto Hockey, uh, you've got like um, you've got the global and local space as well, but you yeah. also got something called super global. 
where it's seen within any of the functions. Any and all functions. Yes, yes. I, I just recently came across a, a few times where I was I started building GUIs inside of functions mm -hmm. and having the issue where if if uh, I build the GUI inside of a function and even if I set it to global, it wouldn't necessarily be seen if I used it in another function. Right. Function mm -hmm. to function, no function to function in operability with globals. If you're if you're defining the global within a function, because oh. all that does here, say let's global um, something. So I can see that in labels and something is out here mm -hmm. is fine. Mm -hmm. But oh, another function. if I put it in another function, yeah, I can't see it. I didn't know that something oh. is no. Uh, ooh, I misspelled that. Something here is not equal yeah. to yeah. function uh, something. Oops. I just recently came across that because normally I don't have to build a GUI inside of a function, but oh, I, I do have, all the time. It's it's more it's the only reason I started doing it was because the the GUI was had so many controls. I wanted to split it up so that way I could condense the code down. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I do it constantly, constantly. That's why, um, okay, so now if you do global something, this creates a super global. So <laughs> no matter yeah. where it is, it's always going to be this. And up until, normally I declare it like that, right? So mm -hmm. I never had the problem until I started doing the GUIs in the functions and trying to declare them inside of the function as globals. Right, right. And Chad, just to, to follow up on that, so now that you've declared it on line three, mm -hmm. and let's say you had your your eleven to twenty one still there, and that mm -hmm. you you referenced it, you you populated it with something, then inside a different function, it it would have that value, correct? Yes. Okay. See, now, yeah. it's basically it's well, a true it's a true global. Right. So just right. make sure you declare it in your main, and then as global, and you negate the issue. Right, so okay. I something that. colon equals one. Now, so. one okay, one thing I, I learned when I was doing with the functions was that I didn't actually have to go through each variable and declare it as a as a uh, global, um, but I couldn't see it being the same way as if I declared it up at the top at line three. Like, if I put it in the function, if like the first line in the function is global, no mm -hmm. variable beside it. All the variables that are in that function are global. As well, yes. Yeah, but I, you can't do that with the other one up at the top. Is it? No, 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 no. No, just um, a straight global doesn't create or make all variables super global. Yeah. yeah. Inside a function, though, if you, let's say I declared two first and then I put global and declared one, would it be that point going forward or all of them? I assume so. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. So he's saying he's saying that okay. So so let's say he goes into a function. He can say that the first variable is local, and then the second one, everything after that is global. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can do that. You can do that. You can do as many <coughs> locals and globals as you like. It doesn't really matter. And you once you declare it global, everything between, after that. You can probably switch between them too. So let's say if I oh, if okay. I come into a, if I come into a function and I just say global, nothing beside it, and then I have 10 variables, all 10 of them will be global, and then I can switch back to local again just by saying local. Yeah. Okay. And everything that follows that will be local. Should so be. So you're basically changing well, that. Let's test it. So, yeah. um, all right, so let's message box else. So, function. <laughs> so we'll go to function, and we'll say... Global uh, something, which it already is, and then local uh, and else colon equals something else. So we come and we run that. Oh, interesting. I think, th oh, you know what? So you, oh, it's, maybe yeah, not. You no. So you have to say, can you do? Can you put the local beside it? Though? No. Well, you can local like, um, let's see, local else. No. 
variables. Okay, so maybe it has to be the first. I know you can do it up at the top. Right, but hold on a second. Global variables must not be declared in this function. Put put global. No, no, no. Get, do put that back again. Put what you just took out back. Hold on. Yeah, just, just, uh, okay, now no, on a new line, put something else. I mean, on a new line, put something. Like global on its own line. Global on its own line. Okay. No, 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 no. Do global, and then on the line below it, put something. Right here? Yeah, so get rid of the global something and just uh, put... Yeah. Okay. okay, there, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, sadly, you can only do one or the other. Yeah, something hmm. equals to... Now, if... Uh, oh, that's interesting. Let's try... Else, and yeah. What if you put local on its own line, just like you did with the global before? I don't think it's going to make a difference. Yeah. Because hmm. if you're trying to. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Forget about putting in the local. Put in the name of. This, put just something there. Oh, you know what? Put something there, and then then mm -hmm. global, and then something else. Mm-hmm. I just realized, I just, <laughs> calling it local is redundant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I it's. Seen, I have seen an example, though, where it did declare something as a local. I've seen that before. Right. Okay. So, okay. So, right above, right above global, put something else. Like? Like, literally something else. And then check in your message box something else. See if that's local. Uh, right, because it's the first line. The first line isn't hasn't hit the global yet. No, and it doesn't look like it's going to allow it because the global has to be the first thing in. Yeah, it has to be the first thing in the. That's where I could swear I seen an example last week that didn't have that. Hmm. Now, if you call it like that, then you're fine. Hmm. Maybe it was static. No, I think it was local. I'm pretty sure it was local. Well, you know what? No, still. <laughs> huh. And local isn't anything. Okay. Um, let's get back to something that might actually be pertinent to what you had wanted. Okay, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Oop. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, you had said you wanted, uh, like, if a value changes, you wanted it to kind of be monitored in a way. Yeah, like, I don't want to, I don't want to have to type in all the logic to say that if, like, I, what I want is just simply that if those two objects come together, mm -hmm. I want something to happen. And I don't want to have to type in all the conditionals to test to see if they're together. Now, type, uh, you still, uh, how do you expect it to magically know? Well, let's say if I have, if I have in my script, if I, if I'm constantly changing the position uh -huh. of, of a, of a object or whatever. Sure. I want something that's going to, <clears throat> it doesn't have to, I don't have to compare, I don't. Like, I don't have to constantly write out that I'm comparing the location of this object in comparison to the other object. I just want that if they come together, I just want them to automatically detect that I'm in each other's space. Okay. All right. Now, okay, we've created a class, and mm -hmm. there's a method called set, underscore, underscore, set. Now this should fire when anything gets any of the values get set. So if we run this, it's going to message box one is four. So you've got the character two. Um, that uh, well, actually, I don't think that works. See okay, that? okay, forget forget about trying to show me something that I you saw you. 
let me see if I can load up an, another example that actually has a better. I have I have a few I've I've written a few games in Auto Hotkey, and I'm. I would love if I could find like I can figure out the logic. I know how to write the logic. It's not an issue of that. It's I just don't feel like it's often the most efficient way of doing it. Sure. But, uh, okay, so let's go ahead and just info. Okay, I have I have an example ready. Okay, I stopped screen, or I stopped sharing there. Okay. You should have went back. All right, so here I have another game. Hopefully this is the right copy of it. Okay, so I have my character, and if it collides, if it comes into the same space as those brains... It'll collect it, and if it gets hit by those lasers, <laughs> you get killed. Yeah, but to do this, I, I I have to check each one of those lasers is its own thing, and I have to check if that laser hits me, and then if the other laser hits me, if the brain each of the brains is their own set of logic. So each laser has its own set of logic, and each brain has its own set of logic. Uh -huh. And it's it ends up being hundreds of lines of code to to actually go and detect here. Okay, so here's how it detects if it collides with a brain, if it's brain versus brain. So it has to keep track of where each. So it's, I know where each brain is. Uh -huh. And I have to check if it's falling inside of the range of the other brain. Right? So this is brain one to brain two. Uh -huh. Then I have brain two to brain three. Okay. And then I have another set of logic for player versus brains. Oh, and you've got it. So basically you've got a static amount of brains that can be on screen. Yeah, three. Three. Right. Three and you brains. want to make it so that three as many... Brains. Four lasers, because otherwise, otherwise I would have have to do so much logic to do to keep track of everything. So, and this is all on a uh, on a timer, right? So, if it has to go through it all and check multiple, all those objects, it's going to slow the game down right down. Sure. Okay, let me let me do some thinking here. Okay, I can give you back the screen again. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, let me see. How do I get back to that? Okay, stop. So, okay, so let's say if you were doing that, if you, if it was you that was doing that, how would you, what would you think of your, your you don't have to actually type it out if you, if you don't want to, like, if you Conceptually. Can't, yeah, conceptually. All right. How would, you, how would you approach it? All right. Uh... Like, I have a duct tape solution. My solution works. The game right, works, right, right. right? Okay. Let me think here. All right. So we instantiate object, add brain. Uh, what, would you give it, like, an X, Y coordinate or something? Like, I started off outside the screen, and then I spawn it in when it just, uh, as soon as the game starts, and then if it collides with something else, it respawns it in another random location. Okay, so let's go this dot brain dot x colon equals x this dot brain dot y colon equals y. So we're just basically keeping track of an x y coordinate. Mm -hmm. um, now, are you doing widths and heights as well? Yes, but it's it's fixed. The width oh. and height is fixed. Okay. So you don't have to fart around with that. No. Okay. So because, we're going to... Because all, all those things, those are just images. And if you start playing around with the width and height with images, you have to redraw it. Sure, 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 sure. Okay. So we're going to add the brain off screen, negative 10, negative 10. So this dot brain dot X is going to be negative 10. 
this dot brain dot y is going to equal negative 10. Okay, so OBJ, uh, let's do it down here. So add character, and we're going to be an X and a Y. So uh, now hold on. Now those those all of those things that that was a um, a timer just to detect their collision. There's also their own. Each of them has their own timer, so that way if they if they hit the border. If they hit the border, they they move in a random another random direction. If the laser, if the laser hits the other side, it, it resets it to center. And all that, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there's a probably a hundred hours worth of logic that you wrote that I'm <laughs> yeah yeah I'm not going to be able to account for, but I'm just gonna say basic information here right now. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we've created the object. We're adding the character. Let's say it's a 500 by 500 field. So 250, 250, that puts them in the center. That's, you know, it's obviously going to be different because there's going to be offsets for the width and the height of the character. Mm -hmm. But we're just going to say center, 250, 250. All right. So now we've got object dot character dot x colon equals let's say he moved left um, say 50 pixels so 200 he just moved along the x 200 so that puts him at 200 250 so let's see oh you know what that's interesting i wonder if any of that's going to, okay, so down x, y, okay, negative 10, negative 10, that's great. And, okay, so I think this has to be, sadly, like that. there we go. Oh, yeah, because that's, okay. All right, so we set object character X to 200. It came in here to this set, and it says, okay, character X is now 200, or character X is 200. So now you can uh, have it do logic in here, because what's going to happen is it's going to say this dot character dot x and y ooh interesting this is not hold on a second do, 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 do. hmm oops this which it should be yeah uh chr yeah, it's probably the same. This dot character dot x. Huh. I apologize. Give me a second. No, 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 no. I, I, I know that uh, <clears throat> thinking about this stuff is... Uh... I'm just confused at the moment here. Was this dot character... So... This, uh, you know what? I don't think that's going to work that way. Aha! Okay. I'm an idiot. Uh, this dot character colon equals. So we've got to create the object first before we can start dumping info into it. I believe this dot character uh, da, 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 so m this dot character dot x. Why is that? I'm probably misspelling that too, by the way. What? Okay. Um, what about one of the the thoughts that I've had for moving forward when I start doing more games is actually creating a grid, and so my my character would would occupy a certain amount of squares within that grid. 
So uh-huh. let's say, so I, let's say I create the grid. It's ten pixels by ten pixels, mm-hmm. right? And then as I move my character, I can just change and make it kind of like an array or a, a multi-dimensional array, and uh-huh. say that these these are being occupied by the character. By, by the character. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing. Uh, I apologize. Uh, X is oh. Wait a minute. Oh wait, yeah, that's two fifty. Okay. I was actually thinking of doing like a writing up a, a demo of it where I'll create a an AI to actually find its way out of a maze. Uh huh. So it can. It'll just use a. I'll just create a grid or a lattice of uh, ones and zeros, and if it encounters a one, it has to find another path. So I'll, I'll say, I want you to move up to this part of the screen. You can see this many pixels around you, or this many blocks around you. Find the f- fastest path through it. Hmm. That's interesting. That doesn't trigger. That doesn't trigger. Hmm. That's really strange. I honestly, I don't use set often, so please. No, 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 no. Don't, don't worry, man. Don't worry. <clears throat> even if you don't come up with anything, even if you don't come up with anything. Uh... But you, you know what, Chad? I, I, because I have yet to really. I've used a class, but I don't build classes right for myself. Right. Um, but how you were using it here, I finally got like, oh, you know what? You you create this class, and then for each brain, you have an instance of it, right? Right. And you just store that, and it makes it much easier, no, no matter how many brains you have or whatever, to just create another, you know, another instance of it. Right. <clears throat> Which that totally clicked for me when I was seeing this. Okay. So that does work. All right, good. I was just being an idiot. Okay, so uh, bear with me. Uh, yeah, no, no, no problem. When you're when you get to the to the like a a point when you're happy with it, then I'll I'll, I'll get you to walk me through everything that's in it. Right. <clears throat> okay, this dot brain. This dot all dot brain. This dot all dot that. So this dot all the brain colon equals square character. This not to put the not to put the pressure on you, but uh, would you be able to do a test on this in a tooltip? Well, I could do that. I'm sure. Okay. So this like creating one, a simulated character. Right, 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 right. Um, okay. So this the all. So this the all. Square bracket. Info dot one. Info dot two colon equals. Info dot three. Uh, okay, why did that just stop working all of a sudden? What the hell? Oh. Object dot character because object dot character doesn't exist anymore. 
Oh. The character. Oh. I'm trying to uh, figure out. Okay, so that's going into there. A lot, apparently. Uh, let's see. Oop, something froze. Oh, come on. Here, I'll give you two or three minutes of peace without worrying about me looking over your shoulder. I'll go for a smoke. <laughs> I'll go for a smoke. Okay. Thanks for your help, John. Yeah, yeah thank you very you. much. Even yeah. if nothing comes of it, if you go over what your your thought process afterwards and show me what's going on in it, that'll be a big help. Sure, sure. Because all I really need is I need the Rosetta Stone. That's all I need. I just need the thing that breaks the code, and then I can take it from there. Right. I know that wasn't there. I don't. I got file open. No. Object. In the hell. I am so confused. Is it just the set thing that you're having problems with? <clears throat> yeah. Why, in on line 23 where you set and you have info, what, what's the asterisk for? It uh, makes it veridic. OK. Right. So that it can take as many yep. Yep. inputs as possible. It's been a while since I've used it. <laughs> I do remember that now. Okay, new test. Okay. A message box here. Okay, that works fine. So, okay, that got in there. Why did it? Oh, because that. Okay, so that got into there. All right, so we're going to add a character. Just the character. Oh, I did that backwards. Okay, it made it there twice. Info dot one, info dot two, info dot. Three, okay, character blank, character, oh, okay, because it's getting in to here from here, okay, all right, so if not info dot two, Oh, three. Oh, shit. Okay, info. Oh, yeah, good point. Uh, okay. Oh, there we go. The if is object info dot two. There we go. Okay. So. No. Oh, it can't. So you're setting it where it can't get in there. It can't set something if it doesn't exist. Well, Is what it, it um, <clears throat> this right here creates an object, mm -hmm. and then it's going to come in here to set mm -hmm. because it's setting something within the object. But I don't want it to come in here 
I, I, it's creating an object. I don't want it to come in here at this point because it's, it's pointless. I'm just creating the character here and it's gonna, that's, and it would come in here, but if that second right. info, which would be this, yeah, yeah it's, uh, I'll explain it later. Okay. So I don't understand. <clears throat> this character here at X two hundred. Oh, that's why I was getting double. I'm an idiot. This character X two hundred. So why is that? Because that's not, that's weird. So are you able to follow this logic, Joe? Ha, no, not, I mean, at a high level, yeah, but I understand some of the concept, but. Why is that not getting the error? Yeah, I, like I said, I don't create classes, but I'll use one that someone's built. Here, question mark. Okay. What about what about thoughts about uh, how would you approach the, that problem? Yeah, hey, you're doing stuff that I yeah I it's outside of what I normally do at all. So, but I like I said when when I do get the idea of because that's what classes always bug me. If like I don't understand why I'd use a class, then mainly because I don't really replicate instances of things. But in your case where you have multiple brains or multiple lasers. It makes total sense. Finally, I get like, okay, now for each brain, right, you have a set level of variables and you want to keep track of each one and so much easier. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out why object character dot X. <laughs> why it isn't coming through in the this because if i even just get rid of all of this object character dot x is 200 outside it's 200 which is fine but inside of here It's blank. Can you use your debugger to help? It's, no. Uh, no. Okay. It should, uh, well, I could try, but I don't think it's going to How you're commenting out, is that your own code, or is that just for uh, studio? or Just studio. Okay, okay. Because I, I use site, uh, the block comment. Yeah, no, studio has, I mean, site has block comments also. Yeah. What yeah, are they, and they work the same. What is it? What's the what's the hotkey for? Oh, uh, just go under search and you, or edit, and you'll see it. I don't typically use the hotkey, so I, I don't know off the top of my head. Edit block box. I think it's block comment or yeah. Com what's what's it if, under? Uh, under edit. Under edit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll see it. Box comment. Okay, yeah, control, yes. control shift B, let me see. Yep, so if you highlight multiple rows. Yeah. But the control Q, if you highlight multiple rows, it does, uh, it puts the, X, the semicolon in front of each yeah, one. Yeah, the thing, the thing about that, though, is that I can't condense it. Gotcha. Right. 
doesn't give you the folding. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Like I did, I did, I spent the first eight months of scripting in Notepad. Oh, mercy. Yeah. I, is, until I wrote Studio, that's how I scripted. <clears throat> I wrote Studio with Notepad, and then I wrote Studio with Studio. Okay, so like I said, this, this kind of ended because we switched over to talking about Studio. Uh, later on, we come back in some other videos. If you're interested, let me know, and I'll finish editing those. It's hard because I have to go through and edit out um, some stuff that's uh, private information. But anyway, hope you're having a great day. Cheers.